Hello everyone, my name's Dave, and in this video, I'm going to show you a really simple, easy way to set up flow field pathfinding for lots and lots of units, 100% from scratch using C++ and SDL2. As you can see, when I move the mouse around, the large group of units follows it around the level. Not only do they flow quite nicely around walls and use all the available space, but each unit virtually never overlaps any other unit. When they do, it's minimal and gets corrected quickly. In a previous video, I created red units that follow the arrows to move towards the mouse and around the blue walls. If you haven't already seen that video, you may find it helpful because I'm going to build on it in this video, so I'll link it in the description. Overall, it works pretty good because it allows the red units to move to their destination regardless of where they start off. However, sometimes they are able to move on top of each other, and it can take some time for them to separate. In addition, it doesn't work very well for large amounts of units to reach their destination as a large group. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to improve it. The first thing I worked on was improving unit separation. Previously, every time a unit was updated, the code looped through all the other units in the game to check the angle between the unit's positions and the direction that the selected unit is traveling. If it was too small, meaning that the selected unit would move in a direction where it would overlap the other unit too much, then the move wasn't allowed. However, some overlap is still allowed to ensure that they won't block each other. Otherwise, if the code is changed so that they can't overlap at all, you can see how they block each other and get stuck. To improve the separation, I'm going to add an additional force to push them apart. We'll need a way to detect nearby units and determine what direction the selected unit needs to move to avoid them. Imagine that the unit in the center of your screen is the selected unit, and there are a bunch of units around it. A circle can be drawn that represents the selected unit's visibility radius, which in this example includes two other units. Notice how if a vector is drawn from the center of one of the close-by units towards the center of the selected unit, it points in the direction that the selected unit needs to move to get away from that unit. The same thing can be done for any other units that are within the unit's visibility radius, which of course in this example is just the one other unit. Then all the vectors can be added together and normalized to determine what direction the selected unit needs to move to get away from the group. I then wrote some code to implement this, which you can see in front of you. I also wrote some code that combines the normal from the flow field with the normal for separation. Let's try it out. So you can see that the units now usually have a space between them. However, when they get to the destination, they get a lot closer, and many of them are vibrating so fast that they look like they're having a seizure. So that's not really what we want. To improve the separation, I'm going to multiply the normal separation by an arbitrary value so that it's weighted much more heavily than the normal from the flow field. This means that any time the units get close together, separation becomes a much greater priority than moving along the flow field. Now you can see that they're staying apart far more than before. However, they're still vibrating like crazy. I'm sure that there's many ways to deal with this. However, I want to keep it simple. I noticed that they're often vibrating around what is essentially a fixed point in space. Therefore, I'm going to be clever and create another vector called pose draw that will essentially be a moving average of the position vectors to try and smooth things out. There are many ways that I could implement this. For example, one way would be to create a list and add the current position to it, remove the oldest position when the list gets too big, so for example, maybe it will only store 20 position values. And after that, calculate the average. However, obviously that would be a bit resource intensive because each unit would have to store lots of old positions and would have to calculate the average lots of times. So to keep it simple, 
I decided to set the draw position, pose draw, to be a combination of the previous pose draw value based on a percentage, and the remaining percentage is made up of the new position. When the game is run, you can see just how much better the units look now. I think it's neat how such a small, simple piece of code makes everything look so much better. And it's one of those things where it's so important to think of clever tricks like this because they're just so powerful, as you can see. I felt that the units were too far apart and looked kind of weird, so I also modified the code to reduce the spacing, and you can see the result of that here. I know they're still moving around slightly, but personally I don't mind. I'm sure that there are many ways that the code could be further improved. For example, maybe once a unit gets to the destination, it stops moving until the destination changes to another tile. I suppose this would only stop the units that make it to the destination. However, there could be additional code that allows units to communicate with each other. For example, if a selected unit is right beside multiple units that have made it to the destination tile, that could cause the selected unit to stop. However, maybe this could cause them to stop too early. Therefore, a timer could start, and if the unit has only vibrated around its center point for a period of time, then it could stop. Or maybe there's a better way that would involve more communication among units. However, I haven't tried it myself, so I don't know. You could always play around with the code yourself if you want. All the source code is available on my website. Link is in the description. I've also got a bunch of other games, code, and tutorials on my channel and website, as well as a course where I create a Falling Sand platformer game 100% from scratch. Feel free to check those out if you're interested. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.